Hi, my name is Mariah Lusky and I am with Telecom Paris, the Languages and Cultures Department. And today I'm going to be talking about statements of purpose and specifically style. When you write your statement of purpose and you need to focus on style, there are three things that you should think about. Be precise, be concise, and structure your paragraphs well. So often a statement of purpose for graduate programs describes your future goals and current interests as they relate to the program for which you are applying, your relevant experience and education, how you fit the program, what courses and opportunities the program offers that you find interesting and or relevant and why, and how you hope the program will help you fulfill your future goals. Respond to these, be precise, and don't go off on topics that don't have anything to do with a statement of purpose. When writing your statement of purpose, you need to use concrete, concrete examples. You need to use accurate vocabulary and you need to use specific language. These three ideas will help you be more precise. When you use concrete examples, here's one. I like to listen to music, but in fact, we could make this better. I like to listen to 70s classic rock, like Blue Oyster Cult and 90s alternative rock, such as the Smashing Pumpkins. This is much clearer, much more concrete. You need to use accurate vocabulary. Here's an example. My brother presented his girlfriend to our parents. But present isn't the best word here. It's not one that fits as well as another. So let's revise it. My brother introduced his girlfriend to our parents. Finally, you can use specific language. So she walked across the street. I suppose that's all right, but we can make this better. When we revise, we could say she ambled across Rock Creek Boulevard. Ambled is much more specific than walked, and Rock Creek Boulevard gives us information about the street that we didn't have in the first sentence. Next, let's focus on being concise. Generally, statements of purpose are 500 to 1,000 words. However, do verify word, word length with the specific program to which you are applying. To reduce wordiness and to be more concise, there are things that you can do. First, eliminate redundancy. The ball, which was red in color, bounced along down the street. But red in color, well, that's redundant. We know red is a color. And along down, well, that's more or less the same thing. So we could just simply say the red ball bounced down the street. Next, eliminate fillers and fluff language. Things like, in view of the fact that, and due to the fact that, we may think perhaps makes us sound more intelligent, but really it just obscures what we're trying to say. Better would be because. Avoid cliché language. Examples of cliché language are to put a nutshell, or to put it in a nutshell, or dead as a doornail. Just remember that cliché language is overused and as such has lost much of its meaning and impact. Limit excessive use of qualifiers and intensifiers. Here's an example of what I mean. Generally speaking, it is really rather hot in the middle of summer. We have words here which are unnecessary to the meaning. Revised, we might just say, it, it is hot in the middle of summer. Limit prepositional phrases. For example, it is good for bears who are hungry to have pots filled with honey. Whew, that's a long sentence, but we can make it shorter. Hungry bears should have full honey pots. Select strong nouns and verbs. She walked quickly into the room. Versus, she swept into the room. Sweeping into a room is much more telling than, say, walking quickly, and it's shorter too. Favor the active voice. Here's a sentence in the passive voice. The house was built by my grandparents. We can make it shorter and more concise by saying my grandparents built the house. It's also clearer in general. Last but not least, when we think of style and statements of purpose, it's important to structure paragraphs well. To build a well-structured, sometimes what we call hamburger paragraph, always begin with the topic sentence. It's the controlling idea of the paragraph, and each paragraph has one. It signals to the reader 
what they're going to be reading in this particular paragraph. You might need to have an explaining sentence or an explanatory sentence uh, to help the reader understand the topic sentence if you don't think it's clear enough. Otherwise, you can jump directly into a concrete example. You need to follow up the example with one or two sentences of explanation. How does the example relate back and prove the topic sentence? You need to repeat steps three and four as necessary. Sometimes you don't need to at all. And then close with a transitional sentence or a closing sentence. These are the works I've consulted to create uh, this short video. Um, please take a look at the Writing Center, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. There's wonderful ideas, tips, and tools for you to look at to become a better writer. Muriel Harris has written Prentice Hall Reference Guide to Grammar and Usage. And then, of course, you can always go to the university websites and the programs which you want to apply to to have more information about what they request specifically in terms of statements of purpose. Thanks very much.